it was a wonderful week, a long week of food, of leftovers, of sports, and it ended in a sour note, or at least a sour note in the sense of we didn't get to see Justin Fields because the Chicago Bears fall to the New York Jets in the Meadowlands, 31 to 10, moving their record now to three and nine. And the big story about this game, beyond the score, beyond any of the statistics, Justin Fields was not playing. And we even saw drama about who would be the starting quarterback still with that information as Trevor Simeon seemed to have pulled an oblique or a hamstring before the game and talk about Nathan Peterman being the starter. But I think regardless of who was QB number one for today, the bummer of the situation stays the same. And we are here to break it down with the marvelous one, Dan Marver. It's Devin Tingle, Paul Chivari throughout the show. I'm Mike Mercado here on the Sports Cubicle 31 to 10. The Bears fall to the Jets. Marvelous. It was a, a coal in the stocking, an early bad Christmas present from Santa Claus. The starting QB one, Justin Fields doesn't play. And I think we all just realized how important he is to this organization. Your thoughts on this uh, Mike White game for the Jets? Yeah, well, you know, that is the fact. He is important. And uh, I think Daryl Johnson, the, the uh, analyst for Fox, said it best. To win in the NFL, you have to have a pocket quarterback. And he, and he illustrated how many times he's been sacked and hit, and an injury was inevitable. And, uh, you know, there was no doubt in my mind he wasn't going to play today. Whether he'll play the rest of the season is, of course, the next question. But, uh, you know, I, I'm also, I don't know if you noticed, Mooney might be out now, too, for a while. He, he, uh, he said it was an ankle, but they were carrying him off, so I don't know. But uh, they did get 127 yards rushing. Montgomery got 79, so that was pretty good. And Claypool finally got two, uh, two catches for 51 yards, 179 yards. So, all in all, <laughs> what can I tell you? The... Uh, Simeon was 14 of 25 for 179. So, you know, he had a, a Simeon kind of day, 31 to 10. The good news is we've improved our draft position again. Yes, now the <laughs> Bears, the projections are the number two overall pick in this coming up draft. And, yeah, you brought it up. I mean, I, I think really fast, let's take a second to appreciate David Montgomery who's not going to get paid a whole lot of money, who, again, since the position he plays in the NFL, he's going to get discarded and they're going to use and abuse his body. But mm -hmm. he put the team on his shoulders today. I mean, there were some nice passes by Simeon, some nice catches. Claypool had a nice catch. But at the end of the day, this is a, a season, a team that David Montgomery, every play since he was drafted, has given his body up. He is somebody who has always come to play, come to perform, has always been a, a the, the most up professional and today was an example of they leaned on him. The Jets knew they were going to lean on him, and he still did a lot of damage. Uh, I'm where was Cole Komet? Uh, <laughs> Darno, you know, Darno Mooney getting hurt, you know, really did. It, it's a stinker, but it's not like Trevor Simeon was was targeting him. And I guess this is where, for me, this was the toughest part about this game. Like, yeah. The, the obvious has been stated, right? You and I have talked about it. Smart football. I mean, you're one of those smarter scouts that watch a lot of football. But smarter people than you and I have talked about how, yes, Fields is going to have to make a big throw. Fields is going to – but there's also the, the X factor, right? The stuff that you can't throw into a data machine of. But we also know how much better he reads the pressure when he's moving or the pockets moving when he's rolling out compared to him. And like guys like Tom Brady are able to just move a step up a step to the left, a step to the right. It's different type of quarterbacking. But we just saw in this game, who is he throwing to? Who is this offense running through? The offensive line, whether it's a mobile quarterback or a statue back there, aren't going to be able to keep their guys alive. And guys are fall, are, are, are now you lost Eddie Jackson. It's a team that I think it all came to fruition today. Everything that Ryan Poles and, and this ownership and Matt Eberflus it's not so much Matt Eberflus as the front office, but this is the roster they put together. You traded Robert Quinn and Roquan Smith. You knew what you were getting yourself into. And now I hope that Bears fans have some form of appreciation now of how much worse things could have gotten if Justin Fields wasn't under center. And mm -hmm. I mentioned this to you last week, that the run game, even though it's the best running game in the NFL, it's not spectacular when it's not Justin. 
When it is Khalil Herbert, who's a nice running back, David Montgomery, who's a dog, they're not the most flashiest run game. It's not this dynamic Derrick Henry type of run game. It's a it's a game, it's a matchup dependent that destroys your defense when Justin Fields is out there. And even though we we say he needs to hit the big play and he's going to have to win in the pocket. Watching Trevor Simeon today, all the garbage Nathan Peterman has ever played in his in his career. I still trust the gun shy the conservative play calling that they have with Justin Fields more than those two dudes. Because Fields can still make a play happen. We know he can throw the ball deep. We know he has good accuracy with the deep ball. How would it look if you have a five-star receiver? I don't know. They don't have that. But did you learn that today? Did you see watching that game that all the the things Justin is going to have to improve in that are undeniable, the pocket presence, making sure that you know what an NFL window is. But did you just learn today, or have you known, that he is QB1? That at least going into next offseason, this is the guy. Yeah, there's no question that, that they're committed to him. He's the guy. Uh, I mean, I, there were some. I was trying to take some positives out of the game. Lake Zurich's on Jack Sanborn. There you go. Yeah, <laughs> In the absence of, of all the, the defensive players that were traded or whatever. Or in the uh, spot fi- next season. Yeah, 15. Tackles, 10 solos. That's pretty good. If, but they gave up 31 points. <laughs> so that's a, that's a, that's the highlight of the defense. I don't know. It's a, <laughs> you got Packers, Bach, Eagles, oh. Bills. Good luck. <laughs> it's a tough schedule. And I guess that brings us to the final point on the field, right? Because I think we're going to talk more about what we could what we could think about this team moving forward, right? If Fields isn't playing. But what are you? What are the Bears going to do with Justin Fields? My opinion is this. This is my opinion and kind of my philosophy of the situation. Players play. Injuries, pain management, being hurt, it's all scales, right? If you're injured, you don't play, period. If you're injured, you don't play. If you're hurting and it's a pain management thing, all different levels of scenario, right? There's a reason why they have the chart in the doctor's office. So I'm will I'm willing we we have to be willing to be uh, uh uh you know uh, adjustable we have to be willing to accommodate some of these things, but if Fields is able to play against Green Bay, he has to play, because the minute he stops playing, just like today, development stops. It halts. We can make any opinion we want of this game, but everything has halted for next season, and now we have to see what the Bears are going to do. I would play him if he's ready to play. If he's not, if there's even an inkling that he can hurt himself even more for the future. Sorry, he's going to want to play. Your responsibility, as if you were a parent, a CEO, a manager, whatever, you got to make sure that he's ready to go. So that's the first thing. Marvelous, what do you think? Does Fields play? I, and if he's able to, should he? I don't know what the different degrees of separated shoulder are, not being a medical professional, but separated is separated. I, I, I don't, you know, if you have a mild separation, it's still separated. So that would mean that he'd be subject to it being reseparated, in my opinion. So, uh, particularly against these three teams, all of whom might be in the playoffs, for sure, two of the three will be for sure. I, I don't know if it's so wise to play him. I, I'd maybe play him against the, uh, Detroit and Minnesota, uh, you know, after Christmas would be my opinion. But uh, uh, well, again, I'm not a medical professional. If he's at all subject to making it worse, there's no point at three and nine. <laughs> you know, and that's it, right? It's 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 risk aversion, right? It's risk management. You play football, everybody's gonna get hurt, especially the way he does. Like, let's admit, you mentioned it plenty of times. You know, you you've watched enough football to know, yeah, this guy specifically is gonna get hurt, just like Alex Caruso for the Bear for the Bulls, right? The style of basketball he plays, always ending up on the court, always on the floor diving. You're gonna get hurt. Same thing with yeah. Fields. He's just gonna get hurt. He's a big dude. He controls right. a lot of the collisions, but he's going mm-hmm. to get hurt. Yeah, well, here it is. Did my I did my medical Google? Yeah, uh, <laughs> shoulder separations can be caused by direct falls into the shoulder and sports injuries. Most people recover within two to twelve weeks without surgery. So I guess there are different degrees. <laughs> yeah, and like we've seen that he's somebody who already had uh, 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 heavy legs. He's somebody who's been hit a lot. He was going into the season a little banged up already, but obviously the the kid is a stud, so he was able to play through all this. I think just take your time. Every literally day by day. 
Every game is going to be different. Just see how you're feeling going into it. That's the most important thing. Look at Chase Claypool can still develop out there learning the playbook, right? Mm-hmm. Like you can still see guys out there, the offensive line, whether it's Seven Jenkins, whether it's Borum who got hurt, it, whoever you may think, these guys can get out there and develop themselves. But the future of your franchise is the quarterback. And the quarterback's development is the most important thing in a lot of important things. But it's the most mm-hmm. important thing. So you have to be careful how you're going to do this moving forward. If he's able to play, play him. But if you're worried just a little bit, whether it's you, your medical staff, or him, don't worry. What, what difference does it make letting him go against Aaron Rodgers and the Green Bay Packers when they're trying to make a playoff push? A team that's lost a bunch of games too, but do you want to send your guy out there to be a target on a division rival that's already a little surly? That's one thing to look yeah. forward that you have to keep an eye on. <laughs> but particularly if he's going to run – 12 times and be sacked three or four and be and get four, four or five hits. I mean, you're, and, and you know, guess what? They're going to aim for the shoulder. Of course. <laughs> of course. Why? They, they'd be dumb not to, right? Like, you, right. that's you, that's the X factor. You got to go do that. I think it's also when, right, the quality of the run. I, he's spectacular. Any given time, Fields has the ball, it's a chance to take it to the house. But if you're going to run the ball 15 times, right, design plays, I want it to be when you're trying to win a division yeah. or a yeah. divisional game or a playoff yeah. game. Or you, you, you like, okay, I see why you're going all out for that. I don't yeah. need to see that next week against the Packers. Yeah, you might as well run the Wildcat. It's like, you know what I mean? At some point, or or or, 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 or have him uh, get the ball handed to him by somebody else, and he goes out to the side. I mean, they, it's 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 crazy. Uh, they've talked about running. Russell Wilson was probably the most effective quarterback that had a lot of running that I can think of. And obviously uh, there are others that have been successful, but he's, he's, he's was the most successful that I can think of. Yeah. And yeah. I think for all of us, the only thing we would want to see one time this season, I don't know how important it is. I've always felt like the best stat line for Justin Fields is anywhere from 180 to 220 passing yards, 70, 60 to 70 rushing yards. That's a great game. That You're going to win a lot of games if your quarterback is doing that. I think there is such a thing, just like in, in diet, in, in, we are doing a diet, there's empty calories. Justin mm-hmm. Herbert is a hell of a quarterback, a better quarterback, traditional quarterback than Justin. But he's mm-hmm. had plenty of 300, 400-yard passing games, mm-hmm. four touchdowns, and the Chargers don't do anything. There is not one traditional way to win it. But there are blueprints on to make it easier for yourself. And Fields being able to throw a bomb instead of taking a big hit five yards down the field will be a nice asset for him. But if you're not developing that, then you need to make sure you're doing everything to make sure he's healthy enough to do that next year. That another year of this offense with Getsy implemented through an entire pre uh, offseason and training camp next year. Go get him your Mm -hmm. weapons. Because here's the one. If nothing else, what what did we learn today? Bears games are not fun again if Fields Mm -hmm. isn't playing. That's Bears games were the the top five stories in the NFL for the last four weeks since the Commanders game, and now you're going to be yeah this Bears game is going to be one to talk about, but it's going to be about the quarterback on the other side, about the other major metop- <laughs> metropolis city on the other side. So you mean, yeah, you Go mean ahead. you mean Mike White? Oh, Mike White, <laughs> good old Mister White does it against. Now we'll see what happens when he goes against a. You know, middle of the pack defense opposed to this Bears banged up defense. But marvelous, I think we've given this game enough talk. We <laughs> we know we wanted to join the the awesome, amazing people here on the sports cubicle who join us for every Bears post game throughout this entire season. The Bears fall to the New York Jets 31 to 10, going to three and nine in the season. Most importantly, Justin Fields didn't play today. The game, the the turkey was cooked in this Thanksgiving weekend, as we already know this game was going into it. But you and I. Obviously, we love, we're thankful to be able to talk right. to each other, talk to the amazing fans, talk about this game. But this was more of a formality, just to right. kind of reassure to Bears fans that, yes, mm-hmm. it can be this bad, and yes, it's this good when you have the dude here. Absolutely. You know, for me, as soon as it gets to Thanksgiving, I've got football sort of in my rearview mirror. For example, <laughs> this <laughs> week, I saw all or part of eight 
basketball games. <laughs> oh, see, there we go. Now you know the scout is in full range. Once, <laughs> once you start seeing tournaments in Hawaii, right, in Arizona, right. you know it's right. time for Marvelous to get to and, work. And, the, and that Portland thing is nice, too, oh, you, you know, where that. they had uh, two brackets, Duke and Purdue, and, and the other one, Iowa State, uh, you know, is, uh, is it emerged as a pretty good team. So we'll talk about college hoops, too. Oh, well, we're going to get yeah. into it, especially with, we'll see how U of I does with this new class oh, yeah. and a number one team already going down. So plenty to talk about as we start getting forward to basketball. Absolutely. But it's an exciting time. Unfortunately, not as exciting as it's been the last <laughs> few weeks with Justin Fields. But nonetheless, we are so happy and thankful and honored that you were making us a part <laughs> of your Thanksgiving weekend. And I want to thank the marvelous one, Dan Marver, and his family for yep. allowing him all this time to join us throughout the, the entire sports calendar to talk here on the Sports Cube. Sure. My amazing family, Devin's family, Paul's family, uh, my yep. amazing co-host, that is Devin Single, Paul Shivari, and the marvelous one, Dan Marver. Right. I'm thankful, too. Thankful for good family, good friends, and good health. Absolutely. Amen. Not necessarily Amen. in that order. <laughs> yeah. and we are thankful that at least for the last few weeks, we've been able to talk about Justin Fields. And right. we're thankful that we'll be able to talk about him, hopefully, moving forward. But we want to know your thoughts. The Chicago Bears fall to the New York Jets in the Meadowlands, 31-10. to 10, Now 3-9 and nine in the season. Will Justin Fields play anymore this season? Let us know. We're on Twitter at Sports Cubicle TV. Leave a comment down below on YouTube at youtube.com slash Mercado Airwaves Network. Wherever you get your favorite podcast at Mercado Airwaves Network. For the marvelous one, Dan Marber. For Devin Single. For Paul Shivari. I'm Mike Mercado. Enjoy the rest of your Thanksgiving holiday weekend.